If you can't break into a network, the next best thing is getting the user to connect to your fake one. This is called an evil twin attack, and happens when we clone the settings of a nearby wireless network and create a fake one that looks almost identical to what the user is expecting. We'll teach you how to do this with a tool called Ergeddon coming up on Cyber Weapons Lab. Sometimes, when attacking a wireless network, the users are the weakest link. While a network may be set up by some very smart people, sometimes the people that are using the network may not be as tech savvy. Now, it's relatively easy to create a network that's fake and looks almost exactly identical to a network that's already operating nearby, but how do you trick a user into connecting to a network that they've never connected to before? Now, it's important to know that when you create a fake wireless network, especially one that's based on a network nearby that uses WPA or even WEP encryption, if you don't know the password to the network, you can't create a perfectly identical network yet. Since it'll have a different password, the person will never be able to successfully connect, so we'll need to do something to kind of trick them into doing something they wouldn't normally do. Now, since this is a social engineering attack, there's a couple different elements involved but we'll be using a tool called Ergeddon to automate these various steps of the social engineering attack, which is kind of more assisted by technology. So first, we'll need to create the fake network, and then we'll need to motivate our users to migrate from their real network to our fake one. Now, generally, this is accomplished by kicking them off the network so that they absolutely, absolutely cannot connect to the real network that they were connected to. This is great because when they try to reconnect uh, after getting frustrated, they'll see a, an identically named network without a password and assume that the router has just created a guest network or some other technical thing has gone on. Now, when they connect to that network, we can force them to go to a phishing page that looks just like the uh, administrative page of their router and ask them to enter their network credentials in order to update the router. Now, this will lock them out of their internet until they comply, so most users end up giving up and just putting the password in. Now, sometimes they'll get pissed off and uh, type in a bunch of angry, not real passwords, just curse words, so we need to be able to tell the difference between a real password and somebody just banging something into their keyboard. So before we launch our attack, we'll actually stealthily watch the network, capture a network handshake, and then when they give us the password, we'll run that password against the handshake we've already captured. Now this sounds like a lot, and it is a social engineering attack, so a tech-savvy user probably won't fall for this one, especially if they already know about it. But we'll explain a little bit about how this attack works in detail, so even though we're using an automated framework, you can still understand how it's working and how the user would get tricked, and also how to defend against it. So let's take a look. An evil twin attack is dependent on having three different factors in play. The first is a target that is connected to a wireless network that we do not know the password to. Now, this victim computer will be connected to an AP. And this AP will be the one that is connected to the internet. Now, normally, this conversation takes place between two parties. But when we add a third party, the attacker, who will get in the middle, we create a man in the middle situation where we can terminate the connection between the victim and the AP and force them instead to go through the attacker. So this is useful because normally we would have to sit and wait for some sort of exchange to go back and forth between the victim and the AP. But by blocking their connection temporarily, we're actually able to generate this key exchange because they're forced to exchange that information when they attempt to reconnect. Now the attacker sits, patiently gathers this network key, and then permanently disables, or semi-permanently disables, the connection between these two different uh, stations, the victim and the AP, by using a wireless network adapter with the ability to inject packets to tell the victim that the AP wants it to disconnect, and the AP that the victim wants it to disconnect. So this confusion creates the inability for those two to exchange any data. So to the victim, it looks like the wireless network is just suddenly not working and will refuse to allow them to connect. Now, this is the point at which the attacker will create a network that looks like the exact same network, except it doesn't have the same security as the one that we do not know the password to. So to uh, 
kind of more tech savvy um, victim, they might realize that something is up right away and not want to connect to something sketchy like this. But to the average person who's just frustrated and wants to get on with their day, this is just an inconvenience they want to get through. So they'll connect to the one familiar network they see because it's named the same thing as the one that they're trying to get into. So when you connect to this open network, you're actually uh, connecting to the attacker ne attacker's network and they're connected to the AP, so they're able to actually forward on information if they know the password to a nearby AP or if they're able to do this first and just want to feed false information. Now that's a man in the middle attack and that requires you to already kind of know uh, the password to a nearby network so you can filter the internet traffic, but in our case we're just trying to get the network password. So what we can do instead is have the victim connect to us and display a page that makes it look like the router uh, needs to be updated or there's some sort of firmware update happening and have them enter the password in order to proceed. Now because we already have this password exchange, we'll be able to compare the password they give us with the one that we've already captured, uh, the hash that we've already captured, and if it's wrong, we will refuse to give them access to the internet until they uh, take us seriously and give us the real password. Now once it works, uh, we'll check it against the hash that we've gathered, see that it's legitimate, and close down the script so that they connect back to the network normally. Now the great thing about this social engineering attack is it actually most people forget about it because it seems as though your router is just restarted and is doing its clunky thing and trying to keep you secure. But in fact, it's an attacker who's exploiting the fact that you've never read your router's manual and you don't know that a real router would probably never behave like this, or at least hopefully not. So this attack is automated in the way we're going to be using it, but this basic social engineering framework will work for just about any set of tools provided they can accomplish each one of these steps. The first one being detecting the victim and the AP's connection, interrupting it so that we can gather the handshake, recording the handshake, and then creating a condition so that these two parties can no longer connect and forcing that person to do something they might not otherwise do and connect to this random network that we popped up that might look familiar, but is actually just a trap to trick the victim into thinking they're actually connected to the AP. Now, once we get the password, we can actually step in and begin uh, doing a real man in the middle scenario, because at that point we have access to uh, the password and we can create a network that is actually identical and makes it very, very difficult for the average user to be able to tell when they've been switched. So after making this initial bad decision, this man in the middle situation is possible through the use of an evil AP, which is what we'll do today. So we're going to need Kali Linux, uh, the program AirGetIn, and whatever dependencies it says you need when you start it up. And you'll also need a wireless network adapter cap capable of packet injection so we can accomplish these steps here. So it's pretty easy. Let's uh, get started. Hey Bytes. In 2019, YouTube started enforcing a ban on instructional hacking. And as a result, we started getting warnings and even a strike on some of our content. Now, in order to make sure we didn't get taken off YouTube entirely, we had to move some of the more problematic videos over to the Nullbyte website. Now, I understand this is a little bit annoying, but you can still access the content by checking out the link below and in the description. Thanks for understanding. So here we have seen that we've been able to trick the user into connecting to our fake hotspot, enter the password, and give us the credentials without ever needing to do it ourselves. Now, we did this by cyberbullying them with a deauthentication flood forcing them to uh, go play by our rules effectively in order to get back to their browsing. Now, this means that uh, we kind of held them hostage, uh, which is, of course, illegal. Uh, and this is a kind of like a ransom situation where you're making a demand, and because they think it's the router asking for it, they're not too put off by it. They're maybe a little bit annoyed, but they will give it up because they think that it's the router requesting the credentials and not some attacker. So typically, if you try to do something like this and something, uh, the phishing page is something like a, the wrong router uh, brand or others, something else that a, a more tech savvy user might catch, this is a great way to get caught uh, because it's a much more active attack than sitting back and trying to crack some encryption. So again, be very careful. This kind of attack is illegal if you don't have permission. And it is a very direct social engineering attack that while very successful, is also very hands-on. At its core, the evil twin attack is just a social engineering attack that's enabled by technology. In order to avoid falling for this, you'll need to start being a little bit more skeptical of things like open wireless networks because you never really know who's operating them. Now, if you're connected to a known network, like a coffee shop or something, you can always use a service like a VPN in order to make sure that your data isn't being manipulated. 
But in this case, where you don't have a trusted network available and suddenly you're forced to rely on a random open network that suddenly sprung up, it should be a, a big red flag when you connect and you suddenly see something like a Netgear administration page when you know that you own a Linksys router. So make sure that you're skeptical when connecting to anything that's recently appeared, especially if it's not a trusted network device, if you have a password on your home network. And it's smart to not use any network that has an open uh, authentication system because anybody can clone it and you would never know the difference between the two. Thanks for watching this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.